morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to Grand Rounds. And on behalf of the Global Outreach Division, we're so delighted to have Dr. Kalpana Narendran here with us. Um, this is something that Alan Crandall craved. He craved the experiences. Travel was fun for him for a variety of reasons. But what we, he really enjoyed was the interaction, the exchange that we had with our international colleagues to be able to share ideas. And we have so much to learn um, from the world. And we're so grateful here that Dr. Kalpana is here uh, to give her testimony of her experience and to really inspire us to move to the next level. So with that, thank you so much. We welcome you to Salt Lake and we'll have Jeff come up and do our formal introductions now. Uh, thank you, Greg. Uh, you, you're in for a uh, treat. Uh, I, I wish you all could get a few moments uh, to meet uh, Dr. Uh, Kalpana Narendran. Uh, she's a delightful human, a uh, delightful surgeon. She's certainly done uh, more cataracts uh, than I will ever dream to do, and that's as a pediatric ophthalmologist, no less. Uh, Dr. Narendran uh, received her medical degree from the University of Madurai and then went on in the Aravind Eye uh, Health System uh, to receive her board a diplomat in ophthalmology. Uh, she's a member of this extraordinary uh, ecosystem and family that is the Aravind Eye Care System. Uh, she's the head of pediatrics in Combator, uh, which is one of the four major uh, Aravind Eye Hospitals. Uh, for those of you who are hearing about Aravin for the first time, whether you're a medical student, perhaps uh, early residents, uh, they are kind of truly, truly the, the hallmark that we hold in ophthalmology for a successful eye health system. Uh, they're driven by mission. That mission is to provide uh, highest quality eye care to everyone, regardless of ability to pay. And their entire, uh, their entire ecosystem of these multiple hospitals and centers is all driven around that idea, an idea of innovation. Within global ophthalmology, we have far more to learn from them than we could ever dream to teach them. Uh, Dr. Uh, Narendran uh, is, is actually uh, well-trained uh, within the United States. She spent time uh, at Wilmer, uh, also at Jewel Stein, uh, at Will's Eye Hospital, among others. Uh, we're honored to have you. Look forward to learning from you. And thank you again for, uh, for, for gracing us with your presence. Good morning, everybody. And thank you. It's such a an honor and uh, you know, pleasure to be here at the Moran Eye Center. Uh, I actually am really familiar with Dr. Alan Crandall, and I always wanted to come here. And so when the invitation came up, I said, yes, I would take the opportunity to you know come and visit the place and I've been you know, taken care of so well and I'm enjoying the hospitality. It's such a pleasure to be here. So uh, you know coming to my presentation, uh, it's going to be a very simple presentation and, and I'm talking from my heart like what I have done all these years as a pediatric ophthalmologist. And uh, my role in Aravind is uh, I started my career as a pediatric ophthalmologist. I also do a little bit of uh, I say 30 40 percent of my time goes into administration. And I'm also the regional HR director of uh, Coimbatore. So um, today I'm going to take you through the journey, what I as a pediatric ophthalmologist did in my career and, and what I am here today. And I will share with you the insights and the experiences I gained through this journey. So the Aravind Eye Care System, like Dr. Jeff was mentioning, it started in a very humble way in the year 1976 as an 11-bedded hospital. And these are the founding members of the Aravind Eye Care System. And the mission was to eliminate needless blindness by providing compassionate, high quality, affordable eye care to all. And uh, at Aravind, we do almost 40% of them are paying patients and 60% are free patients or subsidized patients. And the building blocks, this is our founder, fondly called as Dr. V. The core building blocks of Aravind are the value system, the delivery system and the innovations, which constantly happens there. And most importantly, the sustainability. So the sustainability is a key thing, which has you know, made Aravind to grow so much. And that is what people outside in the world look at us for the sustainability. So what started as 11 bedded hospital today is seven specialty care or tertiary eye care centers with the eighth one on the pipeline. And we have six, seven secondary eye care centers where only the cataract surgeries are done and six comprehensive eye care centers. And this is all in the state of Tamil Nadu. So it is all down south, except one in another state called Andhra Pradesh. And uh, we have uh, 107 
primary eye care centers, which are called as vision centers, which are manned by the ophthalmic personnel. We have one refractionist, we call them, and the ophthalmic personnel, they man them. And that is the vision centers, and it and, and, and it is managed through teleconsultations. So on an average, we would get around 20 to 30 uh, consult or no. Per day, we'll have around 300 to 400 consultations every day. And each hospital has a teleconsultation room. So on an average day at Aravind, we see around 16,000 outpatients, 1,700 surgeries and lasers. It might be unrealistic, but people who have been to Aravind will you know, know the magnitude of how many patients we see. And, and of course, you know the population of India. We've just met China. So, And 10 outreach camps with around 1,750 patients examined and 300, we do a base hospital approach where we bring the patients to the base hospital, operate them and send them home. And uh, we, there are of course classes and training going on for both for postgraduates in ophthalmology. And also we have other programs for training nurses and administrative skills and technicians. So my journey uh, will, what started from residency. So my affiliation with Aravind Eye Care System was from my residency. So I joined in 89 and then completed my residency. And then the first pediatric ophthalmology and strabismus clinic in India was started in the year 1983 in India. Uh, they had strabismus clinic. It was the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, but combined pediatric ophthalmologist and uh, strabismus clinic was started. And uh, it, under the mentorship of Dr. Merlin Miller, she, everybody in the pediatric ophthalmology, uh, you know, world know that she was a very keen person in developing global uh, you know uh, pediatric ophthalmology setups everywhere all over the world, world in India and Africa and other parts so Dr. Vijay Lakshmi the person in the middle is the uh, the first person who got trained under Dr. Miller and then she was the one who was uh, under the leadership of Dr. Miller she set up the first clinic so why did I take up pediatric ophthalmology uh, when I finished my uh, my residency, it was an evolving subspeciality. There were not many uh, people in the speciality. And of course, you know, my man, my leader, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, my mentor was a very approachable, kind person. So, and then my, my love for children. So that is why I chose pediatric ophthalmology. So then after I finished my, uh, my fellowship, I was working there till about 96. And in the year 97, Aravind branched out to another city in the state, which is called Coimbatore. It's the second largest city in Tamil Nadu. It's also called as the Manchester of South India. It's a well-developed, a lot of cotton mills. So it was a it more like an industrial town. So uh, when we moved there, this is the team, the first team we moved to Coimbatore. And I set up the first pediatric ophthalmology department. And I was the first pediatric ophthalmologist for that 1.3 million population in Coimbatore. And in a small way, I started. So this is the outpatient statistics. So what we started in the year 97 and what we are today. So it was a very slow, gradual growth, except for a dip in the uh, uh, COVID time. And again, our statistics, we have a very strict audit meeting. We call it the parameter audit meeting, which happens every six months, where there's a scale across the system that how many outpatients are we growing, how many publications, how many complications? It's a very strict audit which happens once in six months. The first six months will be an internal team, but the one year thing will always be done by another team from another hospital who will come and audit us. So it's it's a very interesting thing so that it always helps us to grow and also to compare with the other hospitals in the system to know where you are and where you have to improve. And uh, coming to the observation fellowships definitely has a good or you know, influence on us, you know, as budding pediatric ophthalmologists. So this really helped us. My observations with, you know, pioneers like Dr. David Guyton, and uh, you know, I was with Dr. Sherman Eisenberg. I was with Joseph Calhoun in Wills High Hospital. So, and then I was with Robert Peterson in Children's Hospital Boston. I did not come for a longer period because of family concerns. So it was always three months in one place, but that gave me a lot of insight. And these kind of collaborations gave us long-term connections and you know, and, and also helped us to grow. And then, you know, once the department was growing, we were focusing on, you know, things like you know, pediatric cataracts, because we had a it's a big burden for us. Like we almost do around 2,500 pediatric cataracts across the system, which is uh, unusual here in, 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 in this part of the world. 
So, and then we did a study on the etiology and uh, then in the 97, that was a major study, we found out that rubella, almost 20% of the pediatric cataract was caused by rubella. So some parts of the, uh, you know, in, in the country, the rubella vaccination was not very popular. So we've recommended, but the numbers have come down now, definitely have come down, but then we have other causes of cataract coming in now. And uh, then of course, uh, strabismus was the next, uh, uh oh uh he's here ethan i need some help i'm so sorry i'm not a big tech savvy person we so spoiled back home yeah well, can I ask a yes please uh, so how how often are these cataracts how often are those pediatric cataracts um visually significant from birth versus you know acquired in the first couple of years and how soon are you able to do them i'm sure there's difficulties with getting those infants yeah, to you it, in a timely it is, manner. It is, it is uh, I mean, unless it is something, it depends on the, if it is a white cataract, then people come to you immediately. If it's a lamellar cataract, where you really can't see it, then they don't come to you. They come, you know, very late. So, and and uh, I'll, I'll be going through what we did differently to get that addressed also. So, and again, strabismus, simple strabismus surgeries were done. And then we moved on to, you know, do complex strabismus surgeries with the help of a lot of other, uh, thing. So once the department was there, so we have to grow the department. So what we did next was, so to increase the human resources. So we started doing a fellowship training program. See, the establishment of the fellowship program offers, a, it's a multidisciplinary collaboration. You know, you attract more people to come into the department and then we'll help the department to grow. So the program started in 2000. So far, we have trained around 64 national uh, pediatric ophthalmologists, and we also have trained eight from international. So we have people from Tanzania, Abuja, and Bangladesh, and the first pediatric ophthalmologist of Sri Lanka was trained by us in Coimbatore. And right now we have somebody sponsored by, uh, from Moran uh, from Tanzania. He just was uh, landed there yesterday, and he's going to be with us for a year. So this actually is a mutual thing. It helps us to grow also, and it, it also is helping someone to grow as well. So in the process, it's very important to have, you know, conferences and continuing medical education programs. In our society, it's called the Strabismus Society of India. So uh, one is to, you know, exchange knowledge and then get skills and also to showcase the, you know, what you are doing to the community. So this, again, helps us to grow. And then you get attracted to more residents and fellows to take up the speciality. So the initial years, not everybody wanted to do pediatric ophthalmology because they thought, you know, it's not very, uh, you know, uh, lucrative and, you know, things like that. But it's getting better now. And again, ARB has played a major role for the development of the pediatric ophthalmology subspeciality. We all know that ARB is, you know, uh, in India in the early or probably in early 2000 had a very major role because pediatric ophthalmology as a subspeciality got into the limelight after the influence of uh, the ARBIS. So ARBIS did a hospital-based training program and the flying program. So we were very fortunate. We had three hospital-based training programs. So the Dr. Thomas Fra um, France and then Dr. Stephen Kraft. So at different points of time, they were there. So this helped us to improve our skills in complex strabismus cases. So it is always, we come here and observe, but we never get to do hands-on. But this was a real good help for us. So when they came, they spent almost a week or 10 days with us where we could collect patients and operate. And that helped us a lot. So with this you know, brief period of time, the insights we gained was how important it is to have a strong laying foundation. And then you need to become a pioneer in the field. And this will help you to pave the way for the future generation. So this was a landmark thing which happened in Aravind Coimbatore. So when I was observing with Dr. Robert Peterson, he used to take me for the ROP screening to the children's hospital. But we had no such thing in back at home in, in, uh, in Tamil Nadu that we, they were doing ROP screening. But we used to get babies, but the numbers were very low. There's not much of exposure, even with the pediatricians. They were not you know, fully equipped uh, intensive neonatal intensive care units. So then when I was observing with Robert Peterson, so I thought this was interesting. So when he, uh, you know, again, under the influence of Dr. Miller, Dr. Robert Peterson came almost 10 times to Aravind. So every year 
he would come and then uh, 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 if there's a new special branch, I mean, new open branch and there's a new pediatric ophthalmologist, he will go be there for two weeks to guide that person. So it was like that. So when he came, we started the ROP screening project in one of the uh, NICUs in Coimbatore. So the numbers grew up. And uh, uh, there was one dedicated uh, retina specialist who was very interested in pediatric retina. And then in 2003, the first red cam of India came to Aravind Coimbatore. So the pediatric department, retina department, the numbers grew. So then we said, you know, from the pediatric department, we were not able to support. And then we said, and there was a lot of opportunities for the department to grow. There was a lot of resistance when people said, why do you want to branch out into pediatric retina? You may not get patients and things like that. But then the pediatric retina department and the leadership of Dr. Paraksha started in the year 2011. And again, Arbus had a role. They came out with the, you know, advocacy and uh, new treatment protocols with the Indian babies, the weight and the presentations were very much different from the, you know, the babies, what it was presenting here. So it was Kalit Wansi and Anna else, uh, you know, they came there, stayed there for a week and guided him. And uh, the numbers grew and there was a lot of need for more people to get trained. The short term training program was started at Aravind for the ROP screening. So it was usually retina specialist or pediatric ophthalmologist would come and stay for a month and get exposed to train. And it was also an art to, you know, get to see indirect and small babies and also to do uh, indirect laser. So we have trained so far 108 candidates from India and abroad in the short term tra training program. And there was also need for surgical training to do vitrectomy in these small babies. So in 2016, they started a surgical pediatric retina fellowships, mainly for vitrectomies and advanced ROPs. And USAID grants, and you all know very well, but these, you know, this writing grants was also in the process in Aravind. So we had a system where we could grow as a department and we will get support. And uh, so the Aravind telescreening program, this grant from USAID, it's called ROPE SOS, Retinopathy of Prematurity Eradication, Save Our Sight. So this program was launched in August 2015, and it catered to 22 towns of South India. And uh, you know, I, I'll show a video which will give you a better understanding. So they would travel almost 250 kilometers. So I think this video will give you a picture of what we are doing. So this is the uh, retinopathy of prematurity. This is a hospital you can see. So we created a team, and uh, they were all technicians. So we have trained them to do a red cam and then we customize a small little box for the red cam to be carried in the van. So every day in the morning, the uh, bus would leave to different parts of the state. So they had a schedule. So Monday, because there was no such facility in smaller towns for the screening of ROP. So Tuesdays was like that. And, you know, so every day there was a, a place where they would go and screen these children. So it was every day from Coimbatore, they would go and come back. And so it was 18 towns regularly every week. And, and, and again, the government also paid a lot of emphasis. So all the government hospitals, this is a government hospital, they started developing good neonatal intensive care units. So there was a demand for the screening. So this is how the red cam was transported. These are all our, uh, you know, we call them the mid-level ophthalmic personnel, the nurses. We take them after the 12th grade and then we give them three years of training and they become uh, mid-level ophthalmic personnel. So that's what we call them. So for our population, it's very difficult to, for a doctor to go and screen everything. So, so they do the picture and uh, the images are taken. And uh, it will be transported by the technician to the base hospital. So the, the images are being captured and then at the base hospital, the consultant would review them and give the opinion. There is also a, a person who's going to counsel this parent regarding what is to be expected. If it is a child which needs a laser, then it would be referred to the base hospital. 
or if you just have to educate that preemie is, I mean, these children can develop other eye problems. So it is very important to follow up with the ophthalmologist at a later date. So this is just to show what's happening there. Not moving. See, when there's a video, I don't know if it gets stuck either. I'm so sorry. Okay, I need to go to the next slide. Oh, what did I do? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. So, good. So uh, this was a very successful uh, you know, project. So then they wrote the next project wherein they wanted to test artificial intelligence and ROP. This happened just finished in February 2022 to 23. So they were using tested smartphone based cameras. So this helped us to expand the telescreening to another two uh, Aravindai hospital centers, one in Salem and another one in Tirupati. So this way we can reach out to more children and uh, uh, also, this led to publications. You can recognize Paul Chan. Uh, so they did a lot of studies and then came out with these papers. And uh, the proud moment for us was Dr. Parag, our pediatric retina specialist, got an uh, invitation for the ICROP classification three, which was you know such a nice thing that he got the recognition. He's a very dedicated uh, person. You know, the, the, I mean, this is really a success story I wanted to share. Like, you know, yesterday I was telling somebody that next our next project is to start a pediatric neuro ophthalmology. Because when we started the pediatric retina department, retina guys said that, oh, it, you know, you don't have to do this. But then uh, you can see the story like, and, and but one important thing is choose the right person. And then, you know, one who is very passionate, then he can lead the team. The same thing with retinoblastoma was the next major problem which we were facing and then uh, we thought it would be good because we were catering to two states, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And there was no good ocular oncology clinic except in Chennai. So the ocular oncology clinic was started where they would uh, you know, uh, take up these kids and chemotherapy, we had an association with another oncology hospital so the kids would be referred there. And most importantly, we started the flock therapy. Because otherwise, if these kids needed a plaque therapy, they have to go to Mumbai, which is quite far away. And most of these kids are low socioeconomic status. So the plaque therapy was introduced initially with iron 125 uh, seeds. And now they are doing the ruthenium plaques. And they say the cost has come down by almost 10 times. So this is what the oncology clinic does. And then they almost see around 419 cases of new retinoblastoma have been treated. And this is very important. When you have patients like this, we have a big follow-up and we have a long-term follow-up this kid. So every uh, year we, we do this in a big way because mainly for the new patients who are diagnosed, the older patients who are living now and you're doing well in life, it's always a sharing. So that gives a lot of motivations for newly diagnosed patients. This is always a big event in the hospital that we take efforts for people to come and talk about their success stories. And so this is uh, regarding the retina and the oncology clinic. So again, we were associated with USAID. So we were just starting up the low vision clinic in the hospital. And uh, the, then we, there was an opportunity for us to write a grant. So one of our consultants wrote a grant to rehabilitation of these low vision in our district. So this project was mainly to identify children less than 14 years with low vision and then to refer them to the base hospital, give them the proper uh, devices so that they can see better. Because a lot of times these children do not have chance. They either they are into braille or they are just, you know, doing nothing. They just, and we don't have enough rehab schools. So, so we did this and uh, that's mainly to bring them at an earlier stage and then to direct them to proper rehabilitation services. So in this project, we trained a lot of teachers and, uh, you know, technicians, field workers. And, uh, you know, so this had helped for people to be aware. And we did a lot of screening in low vision children. So this is the numbers, just to show you that the total children screen were around 784,000. And the children low vision identified was 1,215. And the treated children were almost 555. And we not only did that, we also gave them glasses. If there's underlying high myope is labeled blind. blind. And, and, and it was he was in the blind school. So those kids were treated. And very interestingly, there were almost 42 cataract patients. 
bilateral cataracts, not knowing that there is simple surgery can give them back vision, they were labeled as blind and kept in the uh, blind school. So these were identified and operated. And this is the publication which came after that. And uh, again, like uh, uh, you were asking about pediatric cataract. So we all knew that the, the awareness was not much, even with the pediatricians. So every, whenever you say that your child is cataract, oh, I thought cataracts come only in adults, not in children. So we did this recently from 21 to 23. Again, with USI, we wrote a grant. And uh, our main focus was to eliminate childless blindness, childhood blindness due to cataract in South India. And we were focusing on screening, evaluation, management, and training and rehabilitation in these children. So we focused on training pediatricians, NICU staff, ophthalmologists, residents in ophthalmology and in pediatrics, healthcare workers, optometrists, and school teachers. So that's mainly to identify at an early stage and refer these children at a proper time, so give them a better life. So our project intended to screen around 650,000 children, and we had trained around 1,380 healthcare providers and plan to perform around 4,000 surgeries and give 4,000 glasses and uh, reach around 10,000 referrals. So during the process, we came out with these, uh, you know, we developed a curriculum for the training of pediatric cataract. So the focus was on some of our trainees, uh, our uh, fellows who finished and gone, they wanted love. Now we started more advanced techniques are there to do pediatrics. So they came, ba came back for a two weeks uh, training program and then came out with these awareness posters so, and very interestingly, uh, this one was my baby project, the eye health card. So, uh, you know, like uh, we always have this trouble to, uh, you know, make the parents understand that you need to come back to us or, or they're not even aware of the visual milestones. So uh, the vaccination schedule is one thing which is, you know, I think it has taken off very well. All the parents are aware when their child is, has to go to the vaccination schedule, that is in our part of country. So they, the pediatrician, once you go there, they give you this vaccination schedule and the growth chart. So they, the, you know, that kind of thought that it'll be very nice to bring out this kind of health card, which has the visual milestones and the, you know, what the child should be expected of to see at that age. So, and then, you know, this is, uh, so now every, any new patient who comes to the clinic gets this. It has a follow-up date, and if the parents are myopic, then we mention that, or the family is of eye problem, then we mention that. So that has definitely helped us. So this was the impact of the project. I'm not going to the details of this. And we also, uh, through the project, were able to operate uh, these kids with cataract. With, uh, and normally, uh, in very young children, we do uh, a three-piece uh, acrylic lens uh, in in uh, yeah usually I, that's what i prefer in very young children less than five six years because later on when they grow if there is a myopic shift and then if you want to and i will exchange a three piece is always a lot more easier to exchange so with this uh, you know what did we gain during this process we thought just you know sharing knowledge is just uh, not only you know helps others but also your individual capability gets better and this investments in training and mentoring, it's a ripple outwards. It, it reaches more people. And uh, the next interesting thing is uh, the setting up institutions uh, outside your comfort zone. Like I was saying that, you know, I'm also partly into administration. So I um, will reflect here my experiences. I had opportunity to work with two hospitals, which I was involved right from the recruitment process, uh, even some of them from the infrastructure in the construction. So the first hospital in 2007 was this in Gujarat. So I am down here in South in Coimbatore. This hospital is in Gujarat. And the culture is very different. Uh, this is called a managed care hospital. So Aravind did this for some time. They managed the care hospitals where, uh, uh, where uh, somebody, uh, a philanthropist or somebody who believes in the Aravind system and wants to replicate uh, this system in a hometown of his or somewhere else, and if our philosophies agree together, uh, then we would go and support them and help them with this. So this was a family trust. Uh, he was a big pharmacy company in Mumbai and he wanted to do it in his uh, hometown. So this was Amreli in Gujarat. So uh, you can see me here, that's me and uh, that's a trustee and that's the inauguration. So this was started in the year 2000. So I was involved right from the construction, the infrastructure, how to set up the OR, and then the recruitment. So I was there with one of their support staff 
and one of our HR persons. So we did the recruitment of the nurses there. So, and the training was done here at Aravin. So they would come to Aravin, stay with us for uh, eight to 10 months. And then we select, you know, like what is our selection criteria? We take girls from the 12th grade when they complete. And then we have a segregation. We take a bunch of girls for counseling, for a fraction with max and physics background. And then we take girls for outpatient department. So that's how, and then girls with computer knowledge will go for medical records. So all, uh, uh, you know, almost our 80% of our, our nursing staff are trained by us. So this training was done. And today I'm really, this is the uh, uh, statistics you can see. What is unique here is once we train these staff in the initial period, if there are 20 of their staff, at least seven of our staff are there. So every department will have one person from Aravind, if it's operation theater or it's outpatient or if it's medical records. So they are there for two years because we do not want to fail the system because sometimes you train them and then put them there. So it don't, doesn't happen, you know? So we want to make sure that the system is, once it becomes a habit, then they don't forget. So that's what we do uniquely. So they are there and we also have an administrative staff and we have one doctor who's trained by us, who knows the system well and believes in the culture. So he is there. So this is Amreli. And the next opportunity came in 2018. So now Amreli is expanding. They're coming out with an additional uh, uh, you know, building, which is very nice. And I still have a good relationship with them. I used to go once in three, four years before I used to operate. Now at least I go once in a year for their annual uh, you know, get together. So this opportunity came in 2018. Uh, this is in Nigeria and Abuja. Uh, Abuja, this Tulsi Chandrai Foundation is a uh, a foundation there and a lot of business they've been working in. They're basically Indians, but then working in Nigeria for 150 years, almost three generations, I think. So they wanted to give back something to the community. So, and they believed in the Aravind philanthropy. So, so the, when this option came up and, you know, they said, would you like to, it was a challenge. And again, when you take up projects like this, it's a challenge, but sometimes, you know, your department grows, our hospital staff also grow. You know, then only then you, it te tests your capacities. You know, when you bring people from the other, you know, other part of the world, the culture is very different. And we're always worried, you know, nothing wrong should go. I'm always worried whether they will go out alone. So many things comes in, but then it it, it really helps to build your, uh, you know, your manpower, your human resources. So the uh, initial challenges we had, first we had to go there and understand what is their rules and regulations, because their training system is very different. I think because you're working in Tanzania, you would know that they have the ophthalmic nurses. The program is for almost five and a half years. They are very well and very good in knowledge, but then the skill is not very good. So, and then there's another thing, uh, which is called the choose, they call the community health extension workers. So we had to first identify what is our need and then how many people are we gonna take? And then they also have a good optometrist training program but the skill is not as good as you would want it to be. So then we had to go in for the recruitment process. And uh, I was there for three days and then interviewed candidates. Um, so people always ask, how is that you were, you know, I, I just went with the open mind even today. And they call you Amma. I don't know. In Nigeria, they call Amma. Amma is a, a, a very South Indian word. Uh, it's just like they say ma, ma. And, you know, it's just, somehow I got very connected, uh, you know, and... Uh, uh, so it was uh, it was nice, and then we uh, two doctors Uttam and Dora, and then uh, the paramedicals were there, and then instrument technicians. All of them we trained. Another uh, nice thing was uh, there's one doctor Mohammed Rilwan. He was from Abuja, who was at the time getting trained in Aravind with us in pediatric ophthalmology. So he gave me you know a lot of insights of what to expect and you know what is the system and all that. So the training was done here at different levels. And then we, we put in a lot of energy for team building and then, you know, a lot of effort. And we also had a matron. We set up a separate hostel for them. Everything has to be taken care of. And uh, so this happened for almost eight months. And then this is what they're doing now. And again, the same thing. We sent our staff there for uh, two years. During COVID period, they got stuck. We were very worried because the parents here, but it all went out well. So this is the uh, you know statistics and 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 I think uh, yesterday or day before they made a record outpatient visit. So they're also planning to expand. And so we have one of our doctors there, one Dr. Deepak is there. 
and one administrator trained by us is there. So this is the story of uh, my uh, experience in uh, Abuja in Nigeria. Again, success is not only defined by transferring skills, but then it is very important uh, you know, to understand the local culture and then go with it. And uh, we all know that the heart and soul of institution are its people. And then next is uh, the, uh, you know, I just have a few more slides, I'll be done. Embracing technology. So we all know that, you know, the scope of services get expanded. Then you see, you know, diverse range of uh, eye conditions and complex surgical interventions. And then this came up. We all know that myopia is becoming a burden now. Certain parts of the world, like in China, Taiwan, and Singapore, we know that almost 80% of the population is myopic. In India, when I started my career in the early 90s, it was 4% in rural and 7% in urban. That was the prevalence of myopia. But today, it is almost 21.5%. And the projection, according to this paper, and we see it really, it will be almost 50% of the population will be myopic in 2050 in India. That's mainly because of the gadgets. You know, all the schools have you know, the iPads and all these mobiles have a big influence and near work. So this myopia clinic, and we all know that they have come out with this peripheral defocus lenses, which are in the market. We do use low dose atropin, but we are very conservative. But this has helped up, helped us to you know screen these patients and we have very good data of because they do not have Indian data of how it is progressing. So this setting up this clinic and with data, probably we can come out with good results in future. The next problem is the uh, the cortical visual impairment. Again, low premature infants and you know early birth and all that has get to increase prevalence of CVI. And we had to do something for those children. So we, during the low vision project with USAID, we had, and again, uh, Dr. Miller's influence, Dr. Linda Lawrence, She's in Wyoming, if I'm right. So she had a very active role to play during the low vision project. She helped us set up the clinic in uh, in Madurai. And, uh, and one of our consultants, Dr. Sandra, has a passion for low vision. So she developed this model of a hybrid care model during the COVID time. They did the rehabilitation of CBI. You no, know, she would connect the patients as well. So they were presented to Linda Lawrence. And you can see this every week they have this going on. They present the case and she would give her expertise. So this definitely, you know, it's so much help to the patient, reduces the economic burden, and, you know, it's so helpful for the patients. And again, this is, a, uh, you know, the uh, we've started because there was a demand. We found a therapist who comes to the hospital twice a week. So we collect these children, they come there, and then it's a big help for us because she's there, because at least we can do something for these children. Again, it's very important to, you know, embrace this technology in the changing world because it will help us to bridge ga gaps, improve access. And also, you know, you can give a redefined patient care. And of course, expanding community is very important as a pediatric ophthalmologist because in India, still the awareness is not that people go to a pediatric ophthalmologist. They would go to a pediatrician. So we need to work closely with community, with NGOs, with the government, with the pediatrician. So this association is very important. And the school screening program is very active in India. We have the District Blindness Control Society, which has a you know active role with the education system. So we do this every year. The government would allot like you know schools, 10, 15 schools to you. So you would go and screen these children and then you know get them back for referral. And some of them get free glasses as well. So that's very important. And uh, the Binox Clinic, I'm not going to the detail of this. And uh, so the understanding is what I felt through this part of the journey was, you know, to continuously adapt for changes and then and always look for the needs of community and give them timely and relevant solutions. Of course, nothing is complete with the good research and publications. We have uh, uh, quite a number of research and publications, but I would truly say that because our volume of patients, our focus, I think now our focus in other coming years will be because of the volume of data, we have never put a lot of effort. I think we can come out with you know, that's my next focus. So we, we can come out with good research and publications to tell the world you know, what we are doing. And my journey so far started as a single ophthalmologist. We have like eight consultants and we train three pediatric ophthalmologists fellowship every year. And now the city of Coimbatore has at least five centers who, all my alumni who have gone to other hospitals and started pediatric ophthalmology department. And they also have, two of them have started a fellowship program as well. So that's my journey. 
and legacy continues. So these are all my junior colleagues. That's Dr. Sandra, Amrita, and Sashikala. They also have been trained here. So this exposure definitely, you know, gives them of this. Uh, this was, I think they haven't been coming for almost seven, eight years now. So this was uh, Dr. David Hunter and uh, Dr. Miller, as you recognize. I would definitely would like to, you know, give this lecture as a tribute to Dr. Miller because she was such a, you know, person uh, that her mentorship gave a very profound impact that, uh, you know, on our institution's growth, especially, I think I also Dr. Vijayalakshmi. So she like believed in Dr. Miller and Dr. Miller at every, I think she came almost 30 times to India. So, and, and, and it was not only Dr. Vijayalakshmi, I, I knew her personally and she was the one who linked us with Paul Chan rekindled the relationship with UIC, we signed an MU with him. And then she took us to Nigeria. She took us to Cape Town to share the story. So, you know, I think she's one person uh, that, that, that she constantly provided guidance, expertise, and, and, you know, she steered the institution in the right way. So what we are today is mainly because of the, you know, her mentorship. And uh, this was the 25th anniversary we celebrated with Dr. Miller. She was there. Uh, we were all in Madurai celebrating the 25th year of the department then. So, and not only once, even if after they finish and go, they would have a contact with Dr. Miller. So she was such a person. So what I am here today is mainly because of my mentors. Our founder, Dr. V, was constantly pushing you to go to greater highs and make it, you know, always say, make the impossible possible. That's what he always said. And uh, so... That helped us to shape uh, at least a little bit of excellence in pediatric ophthalmology. And uh, so it's a journey of compassion, growth, and uh, partly success, still a long way to go. And uh, so it, to conclude, I think I would uh, just reflect on this journey. It becomes very ob evident and obvious that uh, uh, dedication, advancing knowledge, uh, willing to face challenges, choose the right team, and always grab opportunities and uh, take a collaborative effect with a compassionate uh, spirit that will definitely pave way for the future generation and also you to grow. And this is the, um, the vision for the pediatric clinic. So we say that children have the right to sight. So we strive it to give it with all our might. Preventing needless blindness is what we do with care and kindness. Thank you very much. And finally, I also have to thank my family who've been constantly with my, you know, with me. My husband is an ophthalmologist, retina specialist. I have two boys and I'm also a grandmother <laughs> to grandkids. My eldest son is an ophthalmologist and uh, my daughter-in-law is uh, also an ophthalmologist uh, who's doing a retina fellowship. My uh, yeah, younger son didn't want to do ophthalmology. He's a mechanical engineer. So that's the story. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I kept time. It's only 40 minutes. So. <laughs> Dr. Kalpana, that was wonderful. You've done remarkable things at Quimbator. And I echo your thoughts about Marilyn Miller. I think everybody that worked with her, I mean, we were co-conspirators trying to obtain funding for various programs, and we all miss her. Uh, do you have advice for any of our residents that want to do international work to go out and do good things to get them started on their journey? Oh yeah, I think I think sometimes we think that you know uh, it's 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 a win-win for both of us. Like you know, uh, it's just not that when we go to Nigeria, we learn something from them. So I think it'll be definitely because I was exposed to uh, global ophthalmology just because of my mentors. It is definitely like you can see how uh, you know when I came here as a resident for I mean as a learner as an observer, I took a lot of uh, you know things from here. So traveling and this global ophthalmology definitely will give you a different perspective and uh, will be beneficial for anybody's career. I, I think it it should be a part of the curriculum, I would say. Uh, it, it... Oh thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so it's it's very amazing to see what can evolve. I mean, Dr. V had a vision, very humble man, uh, and he had a desire to see that things could dramatically change in regards to providing care, and and look what's evolved and happened from that. So, uh, truly, a a sainted individual, and uh, the effort that has been provided from that 
very early humble start is an inspiration to all the world. Thank you, sir. Actually, I mean, um, because I was with him from, uh, you know, very young years, uh, sometimes we never believed. I mean, he would talk about this teleconsultation 20 years before. We said, how is it going to be possible? And then he talked about uh, doing uh, intraocular lenses when we were still doing cryo extraction. So, I mean, like we are nowhere near anywhere. And, and then he said, no, we are going to get, and, and he was very persistent. He was very persistent. And then he was a visionary. He was a visionary. And once he visionizes some things, he'll make sure it happens. Very persistent, very strong person. And, uh, and, and a lot of people ask that, how is that he's able to give it to so many of you? Like, you know, I, I'm third generation in Arvind. So I think uh, he would, pay attention to all of everybody in the organization. So I think that's how, uh, sometimes you may not like it initially. He will, on a Sunday, call you for a management meeting, Sunday morning breakfast meeting. <laughs> it, it was little, you know, but then now we enjoy the benefits of that. Now we appreciate as you get older. So whatever we are today is only because of the, uh, you know, his guidance and his uh, vision. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Halpin. That was a great talk. It was amazing to see how how many different programs you've established and across South India and even North India. Um, I would love to work with you if, since you, you talked about it last night about uh, pediatric neuro-ophthalmology and setting up maybe some sort of collaboration. Yes. Um, when I when I was at um, Aravind and Madurai, there was a regular meeting between the uh, neuro-ophthalmology division um, and another university in like Chicago. Chicago. I think yes. it was Chicago. Yes. Uh, but yes. Peter McIntosh. That's right. Yeah. So we could easily set up something like that where we could meet regularly and discuss. I, we will include you. That'll yeah, be really nice. Great. I will go and talk to my uh, pediatric. And also I said, Dr. Amrita is going to be pediatric neuro-ophthalmology department. She's already doing for the past two years, but we haven't separately labeled, but we're going to do, we will definitely keep in touch. We'll be very happy to work with you. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, just on behalf of the Moran Eye Center, thank you. We, um, uh, this is a story worth telling. A uh, little bit, little bit of Alan's legacy. Um, so uh, I first arrived in uh, Tanzania circa 2012. Uh, there were two hospitals we were working in. One ophthalmologist at one of them, uh, Dr. Frank Sandy. Uh, for three consecutive years, this uh, uh, young Tanzanian would show up every day. I didn't even know who he was initially. He was a medical student. Uh, eventually, Alan ended up coming. Actually, Alan came uh, the same year. Uh, that Vivek Venikanadin came uh, from the Irvine Eye Hospital to, to consult. Uh, at any rate, uh, Alan, being as magnetic as he was, had was just surrounded by the trainees uh, and, and the doctors. And uh, this uh, young doctor, uh, Ammon, wanted to do ophthalmology residencies. However, ophthalmology residency is quite expensive, uh, and it's something that you have to pay out of pocket for. He really had no means uh, pathway of doing that. So uh, Alan being Alan, of course, when he got wind of this, decided Alan would sponsor him. So for the first two years of his residency, Alan just personally sponsored him in his residency. Uh, eventually, uh, and, uh, and then sadly, Alan passed. Uh, we were able to continue funding him through the end of his residency. And Ammon is the new pediatric ophthalmology trainee that just landed in your hospital. And we're so honored to make that connection. I know that you met Alan, it meant a lot to you in Madurai. So uh, on behalf of Moran, here is a, a bolo tie uh, that Alan wears for you to take thank back. And thank you, you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.